step into the world of Pee Wee's Playhouse, a TV show from the mid-1980s that became really popular. This show mixed funny moments, surprises, and a little bit of sadness, all set in a world full of imagination. It's a place that many remember fondly for its unique characters and fun setting. This show was more than just something to watch for me, it was a source of inspiration. It showed with me how important it is to be creative and to stay true to who you are. These lessons have really made a difference in my life. Do you have a special memory from watching this TV series? Maybe it was a time you laughed with your family or a particular scene that still makes you happy. We're excited to hear from you now. Tell us about your most special memory or experience with this well-loved TV series. Sharing your stories adds so much to the history of Pee Wee's Playhouse, a show that still captures hearts and sparks creativity. Pee Wee's Playhouse, debuting in the mid-1980s, swiftly garnered acclaim and a dedicated following significantly influencing popular culture. Its reception was overwhelmingly positive, appealing to both children and adults with its blend of humor, creativity, and unique characters. The series broke new ground in children's television by introducing a vividly imaginative and whimsical world that encouraged viewers to embrace their individuality and creativity. The show's influence extended beyond the television screen. It sparked a variety of merchandise, including toys, lunchboxes, and clothing, which became highly sought after items among fans. These products not only promoted the series, but also allowed Wood fans to incorporate a piece of the playhouse into their everyday lives, fostering a deeper connection with the show. Additionally, the series inspired a range of adaptations and spin-offs, further cementing its status in popular culture. These included stage adaptations that brought the whimsical world of the playhouse to live audiences, offering a new dimension to the Pee Wee experience. The show's unique style and approach to storytelling influenced numerous other children's programs, setting a new standard for creativity and imagination in the genre. Pee-wee's Playhouse also had a significant impact on the careers of many involved in its production. Several cast and crew members went on to achieve greater success in the entertainment industry, thanks in part to the skills and experience they gained while working on the show. The series itself received critical acclaim, including numerous awards and nominations, which underscored its quality and appeal. In summary, Pee Wee's Playhouse was more than just a popular TV show from the 1980s. It was a cultural phenomenon that left a lasting impression on its audience and the entertainment industry. Through its imaginative storytelling, unique characters, and wide range of merchandise and adaptations, the show inspired generations of viewers and creators alike, making it a memorable and influential piece of television history. The TV show, Pee Wee's Playhouse, was created by Paul Rubens, who also played the main character, Pee Wee Herman. Rubens was crucial in both acting and developing the series. His ideas made a world that was funny and full of wonder. Phil Hartman, who later became famous on Saturday Night Live, and The Simpsons also helped create it. Hartman's humor was a big part of what made the show special. Directors like Stephen R. Johnson and Wayne Orr were important in making the show look and feel unique. Cindy James Gossett produced the series with Rubens. Their teamwork made sure the show stayed true to its vision and appealed to many people. The cast was as special as the show. Lawrence Fishburne, who was later in The Matrix, played Cowboy Curtis, a cool character who was friends with Pee Wee. Lynn Marie Stewart was Miss Yvonne, known for her bold style. John Paragon played Jam by the Genie, a funny and sharp character. The show was known for having a mix of different characters and actors. This was ahead of its time and helped the show connect with a wide audience. The people who made the sets and puppets like Wayne White were key in making the show visually exciting for kids and adults. In summary, Pee Wee's Playhouse was a team effort led by Paul Rubin's creative ideas and supported by talented co-creators, directors, producers, and actors. Its mix of humor, creativity, and inclusivity made it a memorable part of TV history loved by viewers of all ages. Exploring the creative parts of the show, one interesting thing is how it mixes different types of visual ideas and inspirations. In a dream scene of Pee Wee, there's a clip from the 1936 cartoon Allegretto. This shows how the show combines new and old elements, making a special visual experience for the viewers. The first season's opening scene is really unique because of its mix of different images. When Pee Wee spins in front of a wall, we see a lot of pictures that include famous people and characters from popular culture. 
For example, there's a black and white picture of J.R. Bob Dobbs from the Church of the Subgenius. This choice shows the show's love for unusual and funny humor. The collage also has pictures like Judy Garland with Toto from The Wizard of Oz, Wally, and the Beaver from Leave It to Beaver, a picture of George Washington, a photo from The Lone Ranger, and various pictures of boys with their dogs. All these images together create a fun and diverse background that fits the playful style of the show. When it comes to the show's music, the work done by Mark Mothersbaugh is very important. He wrote the music for each episode just four days before they were shown on TV. This shows how the show liked to do things spontaneously and creatively. This way of making music probably made it feel more lively and unexpected, which added to the fun and unpredictable feel of the show. These details about the show's visual and musical parts show how it was a really creative and different kind of children's TV program. By mixing lots of different cultural references and using a quick way to make music, the show stood out as a unique and imaginative show in the TV world of its time. Lawrence Fishburne, known for his role as Cowboy Curtis, was notably absent for most of the first season due to his commitment to filming A Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Warriors. His absence in the fourth season was due to personal reasons. Fishburne's presence in the show was significant, and his intermittent appearances marked a notable aspect of the series' casting dynamics. The production of the series saw a unique approach in its later years. The fourth and fifth seasons were filmed consecutively, a decision driven by logistical considerations. This back-to-back -back filming schedule was uncommon for television series at the time and highlighted the show's innovative production methods. Despite the success and popularity of the show, Paul Rubens, the creator and star, declined the offer from CBS for a sixth season, citing exhaustion. This decision underscored the demanding nature of the show's production and Rubin's commitment to maintaining a high standard of quality and creativity. In terms of visual elements, the series underwent a noticeable evolution. Initially, in darker scenes during the first two seasons, animated eyes were used to add a whimsical touch. However, from the second season onward, these animated elements were phased out. This change reflected a shift in the show's aesthetic approach, moving towards a style that relied less on these specific animations to convey charm and more on the overall creative design of the series. These aspects of Pee Wee's Playhouse from casting choices and production schedules to visual evolution played a crucial role in shaping the series. They demonstrate the show's adaptive nature and its commitment to maintaining a balance between creative vision and practical considerations in television production.